guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you on Monday with your PWCC Top 100 Recap. It is Monday, September 12th. The PWCC Weekly Auction ended last night and I have got your recap here for you. I have got a million things to do today. A lot of it is content related and a lot of it is um, you know, things having to do with my channel moving forward and making some changes and then experiencing some growth. So I'm not going to waste any of your time. Uh, let's get cranking. You really want to stay tuned for the very last card, the card that won the weekly auction by a landslide. It wasn't even close. I think there may be some kind of glitch or maybe it was shield or what. I, I don't want to say that, right? Because, uh, I don't want to assume the worst and I'm always positive, but you need to stay tuned till the very end of this video because card number one is uh, mind blowing considering it just sold a couple months ago, just before the national. You won't believe what this card did over the last two months. Anyway, uh, stay tuned because I want to get your thoughts and comments on that particular card. So we're going to go 100 through one in reverse order. Let me get you switched over. Here we go. First card, we've got a PWCC 5% Bird Magic PSA 7 2190. Uh, Hall of Famer Manu Ginobili, he averaged 13, 3, and 3, or 13, 4, and 4, or something like that over his career. Somehow he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, I will let you guys figure that out. I know that it's not an NBA Hall of Fame. It is a basketball Hall of Fame, so his international accolades are considered when it comes to who gets in and who gets out, uh, who, who doesn't get in. But 2220 for that Manu card, I know he's loved, and I loved him too, but... I'm personally not sure he's Hall of Fame worthy considering all of his numbers. Well, most of his numbers were put up against bench units and they weren't that impressive to be quite honest with you. Only Tony Kukoc's numbers in recent memory have been worse than Manu Ginobili's. Go look at it. Go look at the data. Sometimes we remember players being better than they actually were as far as what they actually produced. I'm going to get flamed for that. I know I am. I'm just calling it like I see it. The NBA should have really high standards or we should maybe just have an NBA Hall of Fame for only players. Take the WNBA out, take the coaches out, take the announcers out, take the, you know, uh, Oscar Schmidt out, you know, even though he was a great player. NBA only Hall of Fame like every other sport has. Um, I would like that. Of course, football, I guess, does the same thing. Uh, just my thoughts. We can uh, do a separate video on that of who's in the Hall of Fame that would not be in the Hall of Fame if it was only what they did in the NBA and we had a little bit higher standards for what it takes to be a Hall of Famer. Cam Reddish, somebody is still a believer at 2,340 for that Jim Mint True RPA. The Jordan Nike Promo 2340. I am going to go quick, guys. I'm warning you, I've got a ton of stuff to do. So some of these I'm just going to scroll by. I do have a bunch of these pulled up in Card Ladder. The first one is the 2003 Fleer Tradition, LeBron, Wade, Mello. I think this is a little bit of a slept on card. This is what it's done over the last year. It is down a whopping 61.8%. People have determined that 279 is too high of a population. I'm not sure it is when it's got three first ballot Hall of Famers. There's a lot of similarities between this card and the Bird Magic card. Obviously, there's 279 of these and there's like 28 Bird Magic PSA 10s from 1980 tops, but you guys can uh, see the similarities. The only difference here is it's the rookie card for three Hall of Famers, whereas the Bird Magic card has the great Dr. J sandwiched in between them, and clearly that's not his rookie year as his rookies from 1972, if I recall. But uh, this card over the last year has gotten, demo gotten demolished. Uh, let's see what it's done over the last month. So it's steadied out, right? Down 1%. The last one sold for 2100 six days ago. This one last night sells for 2520 So a nice bounce there. You're going to see a trend here. There's going to be some LeBron cards that are starting to uptick. As I told you guys, uh, and I did a video asking for comments and just trying to get your thoughts on what I was going to do with all of my LeBron Topps Chrome base cards. Uh, I've seen LeBron cards starting to tick back up. It's not an aberration. It's not wishful thinking. It's not me pumping my own cards uh, because I'm a LeBron collector. It's happening. I'm watching it happen. Will there still be some that drop? Yes, of course, but some of them are going to be bouncing. You'll see in this video. A uh, Kobe greenish looking 96 tops Chrome BGS 9.5 at 2520. Cool looking Trey Young card here. Two Jordans sandwiched in the middle, which we won't look up. You guys are going to have to look at some of these prices on your own. Hopefully you can see them on the screen and you're not just listening. It's, uh, it's going to be one of those deals where I'm going to flip real quick to get through this, guys. Lots to do. That's an insane patch. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not a big flawless collector or a Trey Young collector, but that's a really beautiful card. My only concern would be that there's just so many 
uh, our, you know, this is not an RPA because it's 2020. Obviously, Trey Young's rookies in 2018, but there's just so many patch autos out there in the ultra modern era. I just feel like at some point the door is going to slam on collectors' faces when they realize just how many of them there are out there, even when their patches are cool. Like these two LeBrons right here. No autograph, just straight up patches from Flawless. 2017, 2017, a dual patch, and then a regular patch, both numbered to 25, sold for right at 2880 each, both low pop cards. A Kobe Ultimate Signatures, 9.510. The very rare, 90, uh, 1987 Market.com, or Market.com, I should say. Sports, this is before the internet. Market.com Sports Illustrated Jordan 8.5 sells for 2880 That's what that card looks like. Pretty cool looking card right there. Uh, flawless, not an RPA. His rookie was in 2017, so it's just another 2020 beautiful flawless patch auto of Jason Tatum, serial number to 10. This is a rookie, Evan Mobley, Cracked Ice. Um, Number to 25, PSA 9, 10 auto. This card sells for 3,120. That seems kind of low considering all the hype surrounding this guy. A lot of people think he's the next Anthony Davis, God forbid. Uh, <laughs> healthy Anthony Davis, I should say, or the next gulp. Ben, uh, Bill Simmons has referred to him as Tim Duncan-like. I would chill with that, Bill. I agree with 99.9% .9 of the things that come out of Bill Simmons' mouth. I think he might have jumped the gun there, almost to the point where you'd think Evan Mobley was a Celtic uh, for him to talk about him with such reverence. But Evan Mobley is definitely uh, one of the three or four best prospects from that class, along with Scotty Barnes and Cade Cunningham and uh, a few others. We've got a dual patch here from 2019. So this is a rookie patch auto. It's in the sealed uh, slab that comes from PSA, um, from Panini. So it's not graded. Unfortunately, it's got Rui Hachimura over there and he just signs his autograph L. Uh, Rui Hachimura translates to cursive L, apparently. That's what you're getting. Uh, Cracked Ice, Michael Porter Jr., PSA 10 slash number to 25. This card would have been worth $480,000 about two years ago in the bubble. It's worth $3,000 today. Of course, I am joking. Relax. Uh, serial number to 49. So this is the, the horizontal National Treasures, not the true RPA number to 99. This is the horizontal National Treasures, Donovan Mitchell, two-color patch auto, PSA 10, only a pop 10 card. 3,120. I think I've got this one pulled up. I do. Okay, so I wanted to show you this. Uh, in July, this was before the trade was announced when he was back on the Jazz with no chance of doing anything or winning anything. Uh, I thought this card would run a little bit post-trade, but somebody got a great deal last night. In my opinion, on the PWCC Weekly Auction, the last one sold for 3600 in another PWCC Weekly Auction with a worse patch, in my opinion, in July. And this one last night goes for less, 500 less for a better patch. PSA 10 Auto, 3120 So good pick up there. A Kobe Bryant Radiance SPX. I've never seen this card. Good looking card. Number to 100. Pop 3 Kobe card, 3120 A good looking color on this Kobe Finest Refractor rookie card. No peel, so no coating on this one. It's been taken off. And in on my opinion, you know I'm a peel guy. I like to peel it. It just looks better. 3120 for that Kobe. Let's look up this Jordan Hot numbers that sold for 3120 Where is that in comparison to the last one? This is a pop 15 card, guys, in BGS 10. The last one sold for 4,687 months ago. This one sells for 3120. So Jordan cards are out there being stolen on these PWCC weekly auctions. I would be scared to list a card like that right now. For some reason, those Jordan cards have dipped. I'm a buyer, uh, and you guys know that. And I'm about to do a video in a mail day, and you'll see. I am still pouring it into Jordan Gym inserts that are low pop. I'm pouring it in. I picked two up off of um, the Golden Auctions, and I've picked up some more stuff off Weekly. So you guys are going to see it in upcoming mail days. 98 Tops Chrome Jason Williams Refractor Rookie Card. Pop 9 card, a very, very hot commodity in the, in the hobby. I will never forget his rookie year when he burst onto the scene with those Sacramento Kings teams and was just absolutely must-see TV. Just a fantastic player. I got to watch him a lot at Florida, being an LSU fan and living here in Baton Rouge, uh, where he tore it up in the college ranks as well. Just could never get the guy to play defense or care enough really about, you know, perfecting his craft. He just loved the hoop, and uh, and that's something that we can all appreciate as well. But, uh, but sort of a cult classic, sort of that under-the-radar kind of collector favorite. There is a collector base out there for Jason Williams cards, obviously. 3240 for that one. The Jordan Duncan Go Nuts. This is a mixed gem with a 10 centering and a 9 for surface and then two 9.5s. Let's look it up. 
The last one sold for $4,375. It down, it's down 20% over the last three months. Again, that starts from the 5520. If we switch this to one month, you can see it's actually steady right there. So the last four sales have averaged about 4100 This card last night is a mixed gem. Sells for $3,240. So about $800, $900 bucks under comps. Again, Jordan cards are out there to be stolen. The much maligned Spectra product. This is a gold Anthony Edwards serial number to 10, true, R well, serial number to 10 RPA with a pretty cool looking patch. I like Spectra. I know it gets a lot of hate from the hobby or it just doesn't get a lot of attention. I think it's a cool looking product. It's really hard to grade because the cards are thick as a mug. Uh, 3360 for that one. A Zion encased. That is a product that everybody absolutely hated. I think I can speak for almost the entire hobby that no one liked encased. If you liked encased and you liked getting BGS slabs with no subgrades without having any choice, and sometimes they're not even Jim Mint grades, they're just BGS 9s. Let me know, but I don't think anybody out there liked the product in case. I hope they've discontinued it. I don't know if they have or not, but God, I would hope they would have. Um, another Hall of Famer, Tony Parker here, PSA 9. And again, I'm talking about will be in the Hall of Fame or already is in the Hall of Fame. PSA 9, if Manu's in, Tony's in. Black Refractor, I love Black Refractor. one of my favorite parallels in the entire hobby from the Topps Chrome era. PSA 9 for that one goes for $33.60. Let's look up this Jordan Lynchpins 8.5 with a 9.5 for centering, I think. Yeah, 9.5 for centering. Uh, the last Lynchpins 8.5, pretty steady. $3,700, $4,000. This one last night goes for $33.60. Guys, that's three in a row. That's the trend. Jordan cards are here to be picked up. If you're wanting to get into the low pop Jordan market, again, these Lynchpins cards, that's a pop 21. You want more? It's a pop 10 for PSA 9. It's a pop 7 for PSA 10. It's a pop 26 for BGS 9.5. You can add up all of the mints together. Add them all up and it's less than 100 of them in the world. Really tough pack odds for that card. Um, and it's going for under comps and maybe that's that's just settling where it belongs I mean the market dictates the uh, you know the price equilibrium and where it belongs, but uh, There are deals to be had in my opinion right now It's it's a pretty good buying window for the super rare Jordan inserts and for those of you who are ultra modern collectors who are not super familiar with the late 80s and early 90s in the Jordan market um, not every card needs to be a, a gem mint card. I mean, that's my approach to it, right? So I kind of pick and choose and try to chase the gem mints. But some of these cards are very rare cards, as we just looked at with this linchpin. Just like thousands of packs you need to open to pull pull one, let alone what the grade is. 8.5 is okay, right, for 90s cards. 9 is okay. PSA 8s are okay. You need to relax. Uh, and it's really hard to kind of bridge that gap. Terrible, smudged, murky, looks like a cracked slab. You got a loose BGS label. It, this card should have done better. Uh, 3480 seems like a lot to me, but look at the def defects on this card. This is one of those cards where I, it's not centered. It's horrible centering. It's got smudges on the outside of the case. It looks like the left edge of the case has been cracked and breached, and maybe some over here on the right side. The, the label's loose. It looks like there's a crack at the top of the slab as well. I don't know what happened, but it looks like this got run over by a truck or kept in my kid's lunchbox for, you know, the, the, the 10 years since the product came out. Uh, what should have been a really great card is just in horrible condition. I don't know if that affected the price or not, but, uh, you know, for you, those of you who don't know, if you're a PWCC vault member, you can always request PWCC to send these cards over to PSA or to BGS to get them re-slabbed. They'll ship it there, that, and then BGS or PSA will ship it back. You just got to coordinate that with your customer rep. Uh, I would have done that before selling this card. That's just me, but maybe this guy's got deep pockets and he doesn't care about a few extra thousand bucks. We got an 86 Fleer PSA 8 wax pack for 3600 uh, Zion encased. Uh, I say encased, not the encased product. It's from Eminence, but it's in the original Panini, you know, two-piece deal here. 3720 Sneaker Spotlight Zion, 3840. Let's look up this Jordan Hot Shots BGS 9. Here it is. This card's been all over the place. Uh, this is the last year. The last sold was $39.60. This one goes for $38.40. Nothing to see here about what we expected. What about this LeBron Topps Pristine Refractor PSA 10? This is serial number to 199. 
sold for three thousand nine hundred and sixty the last one sold for three thousand eight hundred so again we're right uh that's that's the highest it's sold in the last seven sales it matches the highest of the last seven sales so uh, that is substantiating my assertion that the LeBron market is starting to tick back. The season's starting. Uh, there's some a little bit of excitement about the Lakers. If you're the most optimistic of Laker fans, there's a lot of optimism that LeBron's going to approach and uh, beat Kareem's record, and then the rest is gravy. We'll see how many points he tacks onto that. It all hinges on his body. But from all accounts and everything I've seen, dude takes pretty good care of his body and treats it as a temple. Uh, we've got the LeBron, uh, I'm sorry, the Michael Jordan BGS 9.5 Big Men on Court, not the die cut version. This is the 97. This card sold for $39.60 last night. This is a very rare card in BGS 9.5. Only 46 of them out there. $39.60 is what it sold for a month ago. $39.60 is what it sells for last night. And that is a minimum gem card. A Wilt Crazy Off Center PSA 4. Um, that's, this is what's funny. I'm just about to release a video, and you're going to see it, where I got three cards back. I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to spoil it because you're going to want to see the video. But just remember what a PSA 4 looks like. Okay? Just remember what a PSA 4 looks like. That's what a PSA 4 looks like, apparently. Uh, we got a LeBron Topps Chrome BGS 9.5 base. I don't know if I looked that one up or not. I did. Uh, so this card over the last three months, as I've said, is up 21%. There's 52 sales substantiating that. So that is not a guess. That is not me being rose-colored glasses or overly optimistic, even though I am. The last one sold for 43.83, and this one actually is down a little bit for 4,080. Again, it's a minimum gym here, so that may have something to do with it. But it might just be that the card slipped under the radar because there's a lot of bigger, better cards in this auction. 7.5 Jordan goes for 4,080. Uh, let's look up this Doc PSA 8. This is the power of the PWCC sticker, fellas, especially on vintage cards. This is a Dr. J rookie card from 1972 Tops. It's a top 15% eye appeal. Last night, it sold for 4,080. That card last sold for 2,760. The card hasn't sold for 4,000 bucks in the last 15 sales. So that is a humongous jump forward for that Dr. J. So that is somebody really putting pen to paper and putting eyes on the card and saying, you know what? That's about as good as a Doc PSA 8 can get. I'm going to pay a crazy number for that. That's 500 over the highest of the last 15 sales uh, for that vintage PSA 8 Dr. J rookie card. A Kobe BGS 9.5 EX2000 sells for 4200 A Zion dual patch from the uh, much maligned encased product here, although that is a really good looking card. Uh, serial number to 35 sells for 4320 and that's a BGS 10. We've got a Michael Jordan PSA 6 rookie card for 4440 That's got the sticker as well. I didn't look it up because I'm in a hurry. Steph Curry, these are hot lately. These Donruss Elite cards, people have been talking a lot about the Donruss Elite product. This one sells for $45.60. The, uh, the LeBron Guarding Kobe BGS 9.5 X-Fractor sells for $46.80 in a BGS 9.5 minimum gem slab. Kobe Flare Showcase Row 0, $4,800 for that gem. Another Kobe Tops Chrome Green Laker Uniform PSA 10 sells for $49.20. Let's check out the Jordan Rockstars. This is die cut at the top. For those of you not familiar, that's a really good looking copy right there with the great Corliss Williamson and uh, Bobby Jackson behind him. I actually got a chance to play in the AAU National Tournament when Corliss Williamson's Arkansas Wings team won the national championship. Um, he was an absolute man-child in high school, especially his uh, junior year in high school. I could attest to that. He looked like he did in the NBA when he was a junior in high school, and it was just eye-popping because I was about 6'3", 155, and I had nothing for Corliss Williams, and I could tell you that. Uh, but this is the 1997 Rockstars Refractor Jordan card. Pretty rare card. Let's see what it is in PSA 10. Pop 59. Uh, the last two sales have been a steady 43 and 4200. This one jumps big, 5,040. So a big step forward for that Rockstars Refractor last night. A John Morant, serial number to three, 5160. A Zion Immaculate Collection, true RPA, PSA 7, sells for 5160. That card would have been $700,000 a year ago. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, horizontal, number to 25. Three color patch, if you count that cream strip in the middle. Uh, that sounded dirty. Serial number to 25, BGS 9.5, 5,160. Uh, it's bad when you laugh at your own jokes. That means you're old. Uh, upper Deck Hardcourt Materials, Jordan PSA 9, 5160. 
Triple auto, my gosh, how did he sneak on here? I'm skipping that one. I'm not going to even talk about it. God, how pissed would you be? How much would you pay to take Dwight Howard's face and autograph off this card? And how much more would, I want to know in the comments, how much more would this card have sold for if you could cut off Dwight Howard and just have LeBron and Kobe? I, I would pay double uh, just to get Dwight Howard's weird ass off this card. Uh, 2019 Panini most I, I just lost a subscriber I lost the one Dwight Howard collector I just lost a subscriber I know uh, 2019 mosaic peacock choice that also sounds dirty uh, 5400 for that card it's a PSA 10 Zion peacock choice uh, let's look up this uh, Jordan and card ladder this is the electrifying this card you know, this card's not nearly as rare as I thought. I, I don't have the pop in mind, but I remember looking at it a couple weeks ago and thinking, you know what? I thought the electrifying in PSA 10 was more rare than it is, but I think it's got a little bit higher pop than I thought. Uh, but we've got it pulled up. 5400 it sold for last night. Uh, yeah, it's a pop 70, so a little bit higher than I thought. In 9.5, it was 156. So over a 220 combined gem is a little bit higher than I thought. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. But I thought this card uh, was a little bit more rare than it is. Uh, the last one sold for 5600. This one last night sells for 5400. So nothing to see here. Move along. Another green Kobe PSA 10 sells for 5640. That's the green jersey parallel. That's what I like to call it. Here's a dual auto without Dwight Howard. It's just the greatest ambassador of the game, Dr. J, and Michael Jordan. Uh, a little bit of a dark picture. Tough to pick it up. It's probably better looking in hand. That's a pop one in PSA 10, fellas. 5760 for that card. If it wasn't for Magic and Bird, Doc would have transitioned the game right over into Michael Jordan's hands. But thank God we had Larry and uh, Magic because that, that changed my life and changed you know, the hobby and changed the sport forever. Um, and brought two coasts together and I really, you know, fed steroids to the NBA in an era where everybody was coked out of their mind and uh, smoking cigars at halftime. Uh, we got a Zion Williamson serial number to 10, 2019 National Treasures, 5880, too many parallels, too many parallels, too many parallels, even in the high-end products. A Thrill Seekers from 97, Michael Jordan Thrill Seekers PSA 10. I've got this bad boy pulled up somewhere in here. There it is. Last one sold for 6,900. The one before that, 7,200. This one goes 6,000. So another Jordan that goes for a discount. A um, would you rather this Jordan Pool Optic Gold PSA 10 or this uh, this Black Velocity Zion cuddling the basketball PSA 10 or this Jordan Thrill Seekers PSA 10, which is a pop 34. You guys are gonna have to let me know. I'm taking the Jordan. We got the Steph Curry Bowman 48. These are serial numbered to 2009 because it's from the year 2009. I assume that's not a coincidence. We've got that one pulled up in the ladder. This one's up and down. It's all over the place. We know what Steph cards have done since the, since the title. They've gone down, right? This one's down 25% just over the last three months. The last one sold 5130, but guess what? 6,600 for this one. Banger, right? That's a huge result right there for that seller. Uh, 6,600 is way the hell up. That's almost all the way back to the price that it had three months ago. So if we look at this graph like tomorrow, once card ladders process this sale, it's going to look like that card's flat, but it's going to be a wild ride to get to flatness. Jordan Autofocus, I've seen a bunch of these. BGS 9.5 Min Gem 6,600. Cut above Jordan. I didn't look this one up. I'm not an expert. Uh, there was some talk about they did not like the saw blades. Uh, some some experts in the Jordan authentication world who can are very adept at distinguishing reels and fakes. Again, I'm not. I don't mean to alarm anyone here, and I'm not the one to comment on this. I'm simply relaying what I heard. It would be hearsay if we were in a court of law. I heard some people discussing they did not like the look of these saw blades. Uh, when compared to known authentic cut above Jordans. So do your research, check it out. I'm not sure if you bought the card, you're welcome to message me and I can put you in touch with people who know a lot more about distinguishing real from fake than I do. I am not an expert. I plead complete ignorance. I'm just passing along what I said. If I had bought the card, I would probably look into it a little bit further. Um, you know, it, let me take all that back. I might be talking about a different cut above card. I, I'm not. I'm not really sure. So you know what? Scratch the record on that. I, I might be confusing this one 
uh, with a PSA copy that sold. I, I don't know. You know what? Scratch that from the record. Uh, just pretend it didn't exist. Uh, Jordan, and I could edit this, but it's too much trouble. Uh, this is a LeBron BGS 9.5. Really good looking autograph card from his second year, 6,900. Devin Booker makes his first appearance in the top 100 this week with a flawless ruby parallel. Serial number to 15. PSA 9, $7,200 for that card right there. It is a really good looking patch. Uh, the star Michael Jordan, authentic altered. Everybody is playing that gambling game. 7,200 for that one. We've got a Black Shimmer 101 and a Black Shimmer 101. Who would you rather have? A James Wiseman rookie PSA 8 or a Kevin Durant 45th year card uh, PSA 10? Zion, gold, contenders, ticket, blah, 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 7,800 BGS 8. Really bad centering and surface apparently for that card. I don't know what happened there coming out of the pack. Give me some quality control, Panini. Uh, we've got a LeBron 2002 pre-rookie card, Refractor. BGS 9.5 in the glowing white suit sold for 7,800. That's serial number to 250, and that's a minimum gem card. Horizontal Giannis, horizontal Tatum, 8,400 and 8,100 on those two cards. A LeBron autograph with no subs on the front. A little bit faded autograph, but I can't really tell. It might be on fabric. I can't tell. I don't know enough about the card. I'm sorry, but I think that's an autograph on a patch. Yeah, that, that would be my guess since it's called Signature Patches. That that's not a sticker, that's an actual patch, and so that's probably why the autograph looks that way when the felt tip uh, of the pen hits that fabric. We've got a dual autograph, cut autograph, Wilt Chamberlain and Yao Ming. Now this is a badass card. Hand serial numbered, which you guys know I love, out of two. Obviously it's a pop one. There are none higher, so this is the best possible copy of this card you could get. Two absolute giants of the game. I really wish we had more years of Yao Ming, but foot injuries and other injuries led to his uh, career ending a little bit shorter than it should have. When he played, he was an anomaly. I actually worked at a big international law firm in Houston my first year and, and a half, maybe two years out of law school, when uh, and I got to see Yao's first game in, um, I guess it was called the Summit back then, or I can't remember, but... Uh, got to sit courtside, got to watch Yao, and it's just, I can't express to you guys how gigantic that dude was and how tiny his arms were. It was the weirdest thing ever. He didn't have any muscles in his arms, and they were really short for somebody who was 7'5", so he looked kind of like a Asian T-Rex running around the court, but that dude could stroke it. He is one of the best shooting big men I've ever seen. Shot a really high clip from the free throw line, was a killer knockdown uh, shooter from you know anywhere from 14 to 19 feet. Uh, never really expanded out to the three point line because it would have taken him too far, <laughs> too long to get back to the basket. Not the quickest dude around, but impeccable footwork, brilliant basketball IQ, and just a man mountain, just a huge human being. Uh, and by all accounts, a great ambassador to the game, bridging, you know, bringing that, bringing the NBA culture and the NBA product to Asia. Just a fantastic. Strikes me as a fantastic human being and, uh, and the pride of all of Asia, especially China. Uh, Zion Williamson, uh, serial number to 15, BGS 9, autograph 9300. Let's look up the Doncic, uh, fast break blue, right? There's three Doncic prism color matches that come to mind when you ask me. Of course, there's the shimmers, right? Those are crazy rare. But you got the fast break blue, the one you're looking at, serial number to 175. You've got the blue ice. Serial number to 99, and then you've got the true blue number to 199. This is the 175 fast break blue, but the fast break blue, even though serial numbered lower than the blue, uh, usually sells for much less, even though it's more scarce. But let's look this one up. We've got it pulled up somewhere. I know I do. There it is. So the last one sold for 7,000. This one takes a massive jump up to 9,300. So good news for Doncic collectors. Good news for me because I own this card. Um, I think I own it in a BGS 9.5, however. Uh, but happy for me because I own the card. But uh, that's the only color match Doncic I have left. I've cashed out on a lot of my Doncic. Um, and, uh, you know, it might not be a bad time to buy back in, but that's not for me. I've got other fish to fry in this hobby. Serial number to 49. This is the horizontal Anthony Edwards from National Treasures RPA. It is a PSA 9 with a 10 auto, 9,600. Good looking card right there. Uh, here's a card that's near and dear to my heart. I own a copy of this card in this grade. 9,600 for the Tops East West. We've got it somewhere. There it is. Uh, the last one sold for 12,000. The one before it sold for 9,100. So this one's nestled right in between. The average of the last 12 is 9,500. This one's 9,600. So it's right on the average over the last few months. Not really much to see there. Let's move along. 
Topps First Edition, another card near and dear to my heart. I own this card in this grade. I bought mine for $10,000 on the nodes. If I recall, this one sells for... Uh, 10,300 last sold, 10,200 before that. This one goes for 9,900. So again, right on the number, not much to see there. It didn't take that jump that I was sort of expecting that card to take. It's not the lowest pop card. It's pop 120, but it's a great, uh, like alternative to this, which is, is, is true paper card, right? If his paper cards, 2,500 and it's pop 2000, I feel like the first edition parallel should be worth more than four X that, right? I mean, it's like 1 20th of a pop or something something like that. You know, 1 18th of a pop. I just figured it should be worth more than 10000 I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, maybe it didn't run quite as much because it's not as affordable as this. This is a card people can get in and out of, so it sells more often. I don't know. Maybe there's more to it. Uh, a Jordan autograph I've never seen. This is a buyback from Upper Deck. I know Jordan, it's a one of one. Oh my God, it's a one of one. Hand serial numbered, buyback, autograph, only copy ever, masterpiece, 10,000 bucks. Man, I don't know anything about that card. Somebody who's a Jordan autograph uh, expert, please comment below. But that seems like a really cheap price for a Jordan hand serial numbered one of one autograph from Upper Deck. It's not his playing year, so that might be the problem. And uh, a lot of people don't know, I remember this game, Leitner actually pins this layup to the, to the backboard. Leitner goes up with his right hand and pins this, I'm just kidding, Leitner does not block that shot, he gets dunked on. Uh, and that's probably Alan Henderson behind him who never played defense in his life. Uh, we got a Zion black snakeskin, uh, serial numbered one out of one, masterpiece, $10,500 on that one. A Zion downtown, guys pay attention. You're going to start seeing a lot more Zion flavor. You guys are going to pick up on this trend. People are start, He's starting to trend back up, right? As we approach the NBA preseason, there's a lot of people that are very, very upside down on Zion. And they're using this opportunity to get out of those Zion cards. I got a hair sticking up here, too. I need a haircut, too. My hair is getting super crazy tall. I apologize for that. If it ever interferes or goes off the screen, that's when I know. Like, if my hair goes off the screen up here, that's when I know it's time for a haircut. Uh, but this downtown, this snakeskin, you're going to see people start to cash out of these cards as we kind of approach the preseason uh, so they can get out from under bad investments. I'm not saying these two were. I don't know. I have no frame of reference. But I think you're going to see some people trying to get out and say, you know what? I've had it. He's too unpredictable from an injury standpoint. He's too unpredictable from you know a diet and nutrition standpoint. I, I, I'm out. All right. I'm going to go put my money in somebody else. Uh, we got a Jordan SGC 9, 10,800. An Anthony Edwards Prism Orange, number to 49. BGS 9.5 Min Gym. This sells for 11,400. I could only find. Uh, did I? I think I killed this one. Sorry. I, oh, there it is. Uh, yeah. So this card, from what I can see in Card Ladder, has only sold one time in this grade. It is a pop three, after all. Uh, and it sold for 12,000 in September of last year. So exactly one year ago, it sold for 12,000. After all Anthony Edwards has done, which if I had to summarize it would be prove he is an absolute animal and probably one of the five highest potential players in the NBA over the next 10 years. That's just my opinion. You know, uh, you can watch my uh, NBA 30, you know, top 30 under the age of 30 video that I've got coming out that I did with Coach Pixley. It's coming out this week, actually, in two days. Uh, it'll be Wednesday and Thursday, a two-part series. You're going to want to watch that. I've got Anthony Edwards. I'm not going to spoil the video, but Anthony Edwards is somebody I think very, very highly of, and I want to be very transparent. I don't own a single Anthony Edwards card because, like you saw, his cards came out of the gate crazy expensive his rookie year, and I just never touched it. It's why I don't own any Anthony Edwards, and it's why I don't own any Zion Williamson, and uh, it is sad, and I wish I did, but because uh, it's fun, right, to collect ultra-modern players that you really believe in, but... I don't own any of their cards because they just came out of the gate too damn expensive in, in the year 2019 and 2020, respectively. Uh, but we've got a Zion Prism Choice Green. These are crazy low, right? Yeah, serial number to eight. This card's $11,400. More people getting out of the Zion world. A white sparkle Jordan Poole. I wonder if Jordan Poole takes a step forward or a step back. they got to get Moses Moody on the court. I'm not saying Moses Moody is going to trump Jordan Poole for minutes, but they got to get him minutes. They've got to get Kaminga more minutes, and James Wiseman's going to play more minutes. So I, I don't know. Clay Thompson's going to be healthier. I, I don't know where, how Jordan Poole takes that next step, and that might be okay because 
Um, sometimes patience will be rewarded. I had to do the same thing with Anthony Simons. He was stuck behind McCollum and, uh, and, and you know, Dame, and, and it took an injury, and it took a McCollum trade. And, and sometimes it takes time, right? Steph and Clay are not going to be healthy always. They're not going to play forever. Uh, this Warriors team, as currently constituted, is not going to last forever. So don't, I don't want to hear this bullshit about a 10-year dynasty crap. It's not going to happen. People are going to get injured. They've gotten injured before. Dynasties don't happen in the NBA anymore. They don't. Um, and so I don't see it happening for the Warriors. This year, they are my odds-on pick to win it all with the Bucks second. But, um, again, this is one year. Teams change so fast in the NBA. Players get hurt. Players leave. Players demand trades. You know, all kinds of things happen. But this year, the Warriors are my odds-on pick to win this thing because they are just insanely loaded. And they won it last year, and they're going to be a hell of a lot better than last year. Uh, anyway, that was a white sparkle PSA 9, 12,600. Um, the white sparkle autos apparently are one of ones. I didn't know that. I just thought they were not serial numbered. Maybe they changed that. I don't know. Somebody let me know. I thought white sparkle just used to be like SSSSP. I didn't know they were one of ones. Um, we're getting there. And guess what? We're going to see some more Zion. But we've got two Jordans here. Let's look at the – did I look at the BGS 9? I can't remember. Uh, I did. Okay, so the, here's the BGS 9 Jordan, right? After all the crap that 86 Fleer has taken and everybody wants to pump star, uh, and I mean that in the most uh, derogatory way, uh, everybody's all over stars nuts. Uh, over the last year, this Jordan BGS 9 is actually up 6%. Uh, and it's a pop 1,785 card, so not the rarest card out there. Over the last three months, yes, I'm telling you, people are starting to recognize there's two parts to this equation. It's not just the supply, which is very high. It's the demand, which is very high as well. And when a card gets too low, people recognize that the hobby's intelligent. And they start to buy back in. Uh, the same thing happens in the stock market. And the same thing happens in crypto. If it gets too low, too fast, people are going to buy it. If it gets too high, too fast... People are going to sell it. It's just the way it is. We're looking for that discovery price equilibrium, as you uh, know how I feel about that. Anyway, the last one sold a couple weeks ago for 12500 This one sells for 12600 So right on the number. Nothing really special there. Another Jordan Auto. Another John Morant. Pretty cool uh, patch with some letters sneaking out from behind the uh, closed door here. It's a pretty cool looking card. It's a 101 masterpiece here, fellas, uh, from his rookie year. From a really popular product, 13800 That seems low to me, um, but he's probably got 250 101s out there from his rookie year. Yes, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, BGS 10, Zion, color match, 14400 This card I did look up. Here we go. Um, one year, this card's only sold one time over the last year, and it sold for $16,000. Think of all the horrible things that have happened uh, from the perspective of Zion Williamson over the last year. He broke his foot in the summer. He was supposed to come back and play. He didn't. He was supposed to come back in a few months. He didn't. He was supposed to uh, come back late in the year. He didn't. He was healthy and he was going to make his first appearance in the, the playoffs in the first round. He didn't. He made it very clear he wants to eat shitty food. He looked terrible in all the videos. He wanted to get traded. He doesn't want to play in New Orleans. He's got the wrong people around him. A million terrible things happened to Zion Williamson over the last year, right? Since this $16,000 sale. And his card sold for $14,400, which is really not that much lower than it was a year ago. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Really cool looking cards. Only a pop 14 in that grade. And by the way, this is Rushmore here. So these are your top four. Um, and we're getting to the card that I told you you got to stay tuned for and help me explain. Here's a gold Zion, right? So gold, Zion's got three out of the top five sold cards in the PWCC weekly auction. If that is not indicative that people are starting to liquidate Zion as the season approaches, that's going to suppress prices. I know it sounds like prices are going to run. They're not. Uh, because more and more and more of, uh, of, of, you know, Zion cards, which were absurdly high printed, high high pop, high printed. Uh, I know these are low serial number parallels. I get that, but there's millions and zillions of billions of serial numbered Zion Williamson rookie cards that are in BGS, PSA, and SGC slabs. Those cards are going to be flushed out this preseason because I'm telling you a lot of people are going to try to get out from under that risk. They're going to hedge that risk and they're going to put their money into somebody less risky. This was the opportunity they were looking for to get out. This person probably got out. I didn't look to see if it was the same card that sold, you know, for 16000 or whatever. It may or may not have been. It doesn't really matter. The point is, this person got out from under a rock. I don't know what they bought it for. They may have made a great profit. But 
the fact of the matter is you're going to see a lot of Zion cards like it or not. But look how ripped he looks in this picture. He looks like a freaking superhero in that picture. And then you'll see other pictures and he looks like uh, a black Chris Farley. It doesn't make any sense. I've never seen somebody's body look so different from one picture to another. He looks like the Incredible Hulk in that picture. I mean, look at this picture right here. He's nuts. Um, we got a Michael Jordan BGS 9.5. Here's a card that I own. I bought it for way more than what it sold for. I'm taking a huge bath. We saw the BGS 9 has run up, okay? There it is. The card is up 6% over the last year. It's popped 1,785. The BGS 9.5 is popped 531, and it's down 52%. Someone in the comments enlighten me and explain this to me. The only thing I can think of is that the BGS 9 didn't run crazy hot, and the BGS 9.5 did, and therefore, the correction just needed to be greater to get us back to the price discovery equilibrium, where the price belongs. I, I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you, I bought my minimum gym BGS 9.5 copy. I bought my copy for $50,000 on the nose off of Facebook. Uh, I bought it purely as an investment, and I'm taking it right in the hindquarters right now, right in the nether region. Uh, you know, I'm down $15,000 based on the last three sales. But then you look up here, and it's like... Shit, a month ago, the card sold for 61, so I was riding fine. I was up 20%. So uh, this is probably a little misleading. Um, you know, if you, you know, we're starting from the 72,000 data point, but a month later, it was 51. You know, if we, you know, we're using these last three data points, if we use, you know, this one from a month ago, it's 61. So it could, it, a couple of sales one way or another, and the graph could look very different. And so that's why I want you guys to understand, I, I truly believe in card ladder. I think it's crucial. But it's not the be-all, end-all. And you really got to dig a little bit closer into these graphs to, to, to kind of make sense of it. And, and, and it goes without saying, and I talk about this all the time, subgrades matter, true gems matter, quad gems matter, even minimum gems, it matters which subgrade the nine is in. Or if there's two nines, all of those things really matter on cards that are worth this much money. Uh, it can skew your graph drastically one way or another. The platform it was sold on matters. The picture quality taken matters. You know, auction versus buy it now matter. Uh, you know, my slabs versus eBay matters, right? You're talking about a 14% difference there on what you net. There's a million reasons you've got to dig deeper. And that's why I like the fact that Card Ladder has this view all sales. You can look at every one of these sales and figure out why. Why did this one go for 80000 Well, there you go. It's a true gem plus. That's why. And it sold on Golden, which usually gets tons of eyeballs from the high-end collectors. But but guess what? Five days before that, the same damn card sold for 40000 half price. Why? Uh, it sold on eBay. And it was an auction. That's why. And it was probably a shitty picture. And it was Probstein, which nobody trusts. Uh, I shouldn't say that. The probe scene, which people complain about. Let's put it that way. Um, so anyway, that's the Jordan uh, BGS 9.5 Min Gym, 35,400. And here it is. This is the card. You guys got to explain this to me. Uh, it's the Topps Pristine. You know I love that product. I don't own this card. Uh, Topps Pristine Gold Refractor LeBron. It, it's more of a black refractor, but it's got that gold tin. It's a gold refractor LeBron. It's serial number to 99. It's a PSA 6. Uh, it's a Pop 6 card. PSA 10, it sold for $43,200. So I went into card ladder. It's not in the ladder, okay? I plugged it in. It's not in the ladder. It's just too rare. It doesn't sell enough. So I go to sales history, right? For those of you who don't know, card ladder allows you to find the price of every card that you ever need on every platform. And if you click this sales history button, boom, there it is. The last time this card sold was $14,000. So you're thinking, oh man, that must have been in 2005. No, it sold on July 21st, just before the national. That's exactly two months ago, two months ago, 61 days ago, this exact same card in the PWCC premiere sold for $14,400. Uh, it's a serial numbered 430. And for those of you who don't know, it's, it's almost like this was perforated and it was torn out of a book. It's not, but that's the way those cards came out from, uh, from Topps Pristine that year. Uh, but uh, let's, let's compare. I don't know if it's the same same serial number or not it is it's the same freaking card somebody explain this to me uh card ladder guys do this on crossover whatever this is the same card it sold for fourteen thousand four hundred in the premier auction and then was already listed like it had to be listed immediately to get into this weekly it's the same serial number and it sold for forty three thousand two hundred so two 
Well, there's lots of possible explanations for this. The first one is maybe it did not get paid for in the PWCC premiere, but my understanding is if it didn't get paid for, it would not show up in the card ladder database. Okay, so that's my first assumption is that if it shows up here in card, God dang, what did I do? If it shows up here in card ladder, uh, then that means it was vetted and it sold. If it didn't get paid for in the PWCC premiere in July, it wouldn't be listed in here. Uh, so my first concern is that there's something going on, right? Because cards don't go up 3x in 61 days when the player hasn't played a game. And, you know, I, I did say that LeBron cards are running, but not like this, right? This is like 2020 type stuff. And I just don't know what's going on. I want you guys to let me know in the comments what you think about card number one on our list today. Um, as a LeBron collector, I would love for it to be tr a true story. Uh, I just don't think it is. Uh, I do own two pristine refractors, but I don't own this gold refractor. And that's not my card. I didn't sell it or buy it or anything like that. But same card, same serial number, same slab, same platform. Uh, bought in the premiere, 61 days later, later, sells for 3x in the weekly I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it that anybody would have enough money or be that oblivious to not check comps uh, and know that that's not a $43,000 card. This is not a $43,000 card. I, maybe I'm the crazy one. Maybe, maybe the, maybe the 14,400 was just such an insane preposterous bargain in the uh, PWCC premiere from July uh, that maybe, maybe it does make sense. I, I really don't know, to be quite honest with you. But uh, anyway, uh, that's it for the video, guys. Hope you really enjoyed the top 100. I bring these to you every Monday. I've got tons of other great stuff out there. If this is your first time seeing my channel, uh, you've got a lot to learn from me and the way I do things. I talk really fast. Some people hate it. Don't subscribe. Some people love it because it's more efficient. Some people can even take my fast talking and put it on 1.5 and listen to it and really shove some information into their brain. Uh, anyway, huge things are coming for the channel in the very near future. I have an announcement probably in the next week or two. I think it's going to be a huge step forward for the channel. Hopefully you guys will like it and endorse it. Um, I've also got a really surprise confession that I'm going to make probably in the next couple days. I've, uh, it's a supplemental, um, addition to the way that I collect. Let's just put it that way. I've started, uh, I'm not changing anything that I do. I'm just adding, uh, an additional, uh, adventure, an, an, an additional pathway in the way that I collect the particular cards that I collect that I think you guys are going to enjoy. And it's probably going to grow the popularity of the channel. And that is not why I'm doing it. I finally just gathered the courage to start collecting a particular type of card and uh, I'll give you a hint. It's not a basketball. It's not basketball. And so uh, there I've let the cat out of the bag a little bit, but I will let you know more about it in the near future. It's not going to affect you basketball diehards like me. You guys know I'm basketball 99.9%. .9 it will stay that way. And I will clearly mark any and all future videos that are not basketball related. So when you see the thumbnail, just keep on scrolling. But if you're interested in what I am starting to look into and starting to dabble in and starting to you know, dip my toes in the water, I think you're going to enjoy it because it's going to be more of the same, just a, a different sport. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always, I don't take any of you guys for granted. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't. I've noticed that a lot of the people that watch my videos watch them regularly, but don't hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. It legitimizes my channel, helps me with the YouTube algorithm so I can get out to more people. Again, uh, that's really not what this is about. This is just really more about me having an outlet in the hobby. But thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting. Uh, stay positive and peace.